Welcome, BBCers, to episode number 120 of the Broken by Concept, number one solo queue League of Legends improvement podcast. By the way, guys, if you didn't know, we are on YouTube, but we're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Sometimes people forget that, you know? We have lots of listeners on Spotify. A lot of people actually listen only on Spotify. Shout out to the people that are listening right now on Spotify. All right, getting into Curtis. Today's episode, the meat of today's episode. Big news. Pre-season. Pre-season 13. Changes were announced by Riot Games. So today we're going to break them down. We're going to come up with some uh, early react. BB- Nathan and Coach Curtis react. So this is a pretty raw reaction. I actually have just read the notes this morning. So you're the... You've... You've really thought about this quite a bit. No, I haven't. I actually have not. I actually think about the changes. I've looked at people's, uh, my takes are going to be after They're about people's reactions, what I saw. Right. And then we'll, we'll talk. Because we'll, we'll. I haven't really gone that deep yet. So the, for me, this is going to be probing you. You're the jungle yeah. master here. There's a lot of jungle changes. There's a lot of jungle changes. It's because you just sit back and you sit just- Sit back, relax. This is going to be the Nathan podcast. the Nathan podcast, right? There's going to be lots of me talking. All right. So- um, First thing here, so we're just going to go step by step on the blog post, the official blog post okay. by Riot Games. All right, so, um, you know, they talk about obviously the changes coming. These are obviously, um, they write, say this is still early on. This is just PBE. They can make many different changes, new items, you know, dragons, all that sort of stuff. All right, so the first one on this blog post, well, this blog post linked in the YouTube description, but it's literally called uh, Preseason 2023 Preview, and it's on the LeagueOfLegends.com website. All right, return of Chem Tank Dragon. Um, it's not going to be like it was before. Uh, basically, the buff is small amount of tenacity and heal shield strength. And then the soul, the Chem Tank soul, the four dragons, uh, will grant bonus damage when below a certain amount of health. So it's sort of like a last stand type Like thing. an execute style thing. No, not, not an execute, but it gives you more damage. It's like last low. stand. Right. Yep. 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 You wouldn't know because you don't take last stand on any mid lane champs, do you? Um, I take it on Cassio sometimes. Ooh, that's actually scary, dude. A Cassio with last stand, dude. How many times can a Cassio can turn fights with 30% HP, dude? Just chomping. Because you got to take these. damage to do damage on Cassio. Yeah, that's right. That makes so much sense, right? Because you're in short range. That's right. Any things about that, Curtis? The t- tenacity and heal shield strength. I don't know. That could be pretty weak. It, 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 I but mean, it, it seems to me where it's either really good or yeah. really useless. Like imagine you got an enchanted composition or you're versing a hard CC composition. You know, it's good, but otherwise it quite like, niche. I feel like that's, yeah. It's a that's little bit niche. So then there's five dragons in the game. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's like game change. You know, it's not like that big of a deal. I really struggle. I, I, to, to be honest, I really struggle to to gauge the impact of dragons in general yeah they're hard aren't like they? whether like <laughs> just dragons of dragons are confusing to me well especially as a mid laner right like you're sort of like at the whim of like your jungler in a way you know whether they want to start yeah i can't really like do that, it myself yeah. so i'm always like Ugh. you used to use i don't I actually dragons. genuinely don't know the value of a dragon like i know i know what a rift gets me you know what i mean yeah, like it's very a clear. rift is very clear it's like okay I, I know what I'm willing to sacrifice for a rift. I don't know what I'm willing to sacrifice for a dragon. That's just maybe my, my, I'm off on something. I don't know. So this information, when I see that, when I hear that, it's like, eh, yeah, okay, I mean, we'll see so what happens. We'll see what happens. That's all right. All right. They're changing things around the map. You know, the interactions. Blast cone will now blast the range twice as far as before. <laughs> what the hell? That's interesting. It is interesting. Again, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Uh, honey fruits will upgrade into stim fruits, no longer slowing champions that consume them and granting a small bonus shield in addition to the usual heal. Honey fruits, by the way, are really underutilized as mid laners. To, it's something to I focus heal them on. up to get like better lane to So run. I've actually, um, I think this started about a few weeks ago. I actually researched like the, the time that they spawn and I'll actively like, like I'll time my, like I'll look in the river for them actively. And especially since I've been playing a lot of Galio and I get a lot of prior and I take damage, I'll, you know, good players who play these champs will really utilize them effectively. So um, if you're out there and you, you play like a more skirm, like you play champs that get prior but take damage and you get a lot of skirmishes, um, honey fruits, look at the timer um, and really it's worth looking. It's, it's like worth your time. So that's something you focus on in your gameplay. But the way it works, by the way, I didn't realize it's like it's further away, like earlier in the game. So when I think they spawn around like 530-ish or whatever it is. And then 
they spawn further away from mid lane. They did that on purpose. Ah, uh, because the mid laners were abusing it too. That's much. right. So then, so then, and then I think the the longer it goes on, like if you get the first fruit, it goes closer to mid lane or something like that. Um, which I didn't even know I until didn't know I looked that it up. Yeah. And the last one is Scry's Bloom. You know, that's the thing we the plant that you hit that gets the vision. Uh, so we'll upgrade into Stalker's Bloom. When hit, these plants will now reveal a small circular area around the plant and a cone opposite of the direction it was hit, which is normal. That's yep. normal. Granting movement speed towards revealed enemy champions, reducing wards revealed to one health. Wow. Ooh. That's interesting. So that's looking at like really important map control, especially around the Baron and stuff. That's I feel actually like this really, entire patch really this preseason, they're doing a lot of emphasis on just like objectives, aren't they? Like the map holistically and macro, whether it's like the plants and the objectives and, and pings and everything. Oh, this is just just when it's a Chemtech Baron. Oh, sorry, Dragon. Yeah. Ah, oh, so this is not all. Oh plants. yeah, so this is right. yeah, this is just oh when the chem tank. Oh, well, I was gonna yeah. say yeah, this My is bad. I That's didn't know that. Yeah, sorry, I missed that really important sentence above <laughs> Thanks, that. Thanks, Nathan. It says a lot of the chem tank carry the podcast. The riff will take on new chem tank inspired appearances featuring. Oh yeah, right. Okay. That makes sense. Oh, because yeah, it's like it's like when there's an ocean. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say the, terrain. The, the map, the terrain. Okay. By the way, just I know I think we should touch on. Uh, remind me, we should touch on the new Syndra at the end. I just want to touch okay. on that because yep. new Syndra came out. It's worth talking about. All right, so that's actually so I've already I've already screwed up this, this preseason review already. All right, we're off to a great start. All right, next one is jungle, but we're gonna skip that to later because that's a, the big okay. One. All right, then the next one in the post is communication tools. So they've updated the ping wheel. Leagues a team game at its core in order to better facilitate communication between teammates. We're doubling the number of pings available to players. The eight pings on the wheel will now be as follows. Returning pings clockwise. Retreat on my way. Assist me. Enemy missing. That's the current one. Um, and the new pings are going to be push, all in, hold, and bait. I think bait might be useful because definitely when I'm ganking, sometimes I don't really know my intention. And like, I want the laners yeah, to bait it out. That's you know? so good. But sometimes the laners, they just make it they so don't know obvious. What you mean. It's yeah, like, yeah. guys, like for some reason, I'm playing Victor. I've been playing behind my wave the whole time. Suddenly I'm walking forward. I wonder what the, what's going on, you know? Mm. And it's better to just bait, you know? What what do, what about the uh, hold? Is that in, do you reckon that's used for like, Hold. waves like hold yeah. the wave or is it hold the baron or both i don't know like how did you enter multiple when you uses i actually thought that was the probably the most useless i don't think i'd ever use that whole hold one. yeah yeah, yeah i think it's for bot lane but i think it could be even like the jungle comes through and that you want the mid lane at the jungle to hold the wave pull the wave yeah like hold the wave yeah. maybe um i don't know all right so that's interesting i think that's a cool change uh, new vision pings. We're also adding adding an entirely new ping wheel that will focus primarily on vision. Using this wheel, you can now indicate the following. Vision cleared, enemy vision, and need vision. Oof, that's really good because my need vision ping is the mm, assist ping assist right, ping. right now. But that's so vague. It's so vague, isn't it? I, I think high elo people understand what that means. You've got to control one side of the map. But in lower elos, I think it's very... I think of someone doing assist ping, they don't know anything what that means. So that's pretty cool. Enemy vision is good, yeah. And then vision cleared. Um, ab so this is more objective voting. Getting your team on board with taking an objective can be difficult and having everyone ping on my way if they can contest or retreat uh, if they can't get very conf confusing. We're introducing, an, introducing a new voting function that will appear when objectives are pinged that will function similarly to a surrender vote. Now all players can vote and indicate whether or not they'd like to take or contest an objective. Okay. This is really interesting because mm. this is... I mean, so the, the weird thing is the, the speed of that. Like, because... I like, so my first, my initial reaction to that is I like that they're making people think about, that's like a very, it's it's, great, it's interesting how they're putting that as like a structure to the game. So that someone will ping the dragon and then everyone has to vote on it. So, huh, it's very interesting. Okay, so it? the way I'm, I, I, I want to go through this entire thing, right, yeah. is I want to look at the changes and, you know, really discuss the changes as a change itself, but then also zoom out and think about what is Riot really trying to achieve 
with these changes? Like, what the, what's the overall direction of the game where it's heading, right? So the first thing, right, we, we, we let's just take the communication. Well, all of this is really, it's all under communication, right? Via pings, whether it's warded, what you want to do with the waves and gi- giving or contesting the objectives, right? It's almost as if they want to encourage people to to be more communicative and and share their intention of what they want to, to kind of um to, to kind of bridge the gap in in what they want done. Because okay, right, if you think about conflict in the game, a lot of conflict is started by one person wanting one thing not and being then, on the same page. Yeah, not being on the same page, right? So by adding tools to bring about alignment you're in a way uh decreasing the likelihood of conflict so i think it's a right it's a step in the right direction in terms of like the overall league experience but the negative is that it is making the game a lot easier isn't it like you're you're prompting people to you're prompting people to like think about the objective when you think about it, right? Mm. Like, so it's like, okay, guys, we're going to give the dragon or we're going to do it rather than you have to be proactive and really like use your mental stack to think about, okay, when's the next dragon coming up? Do I want to contest this or do I not? Because then you would have to like type it. And if no one's thinking about it, then that's that's on you. You're like, you messed up, right? Like, I kind of like the brutal aspect of it in that. I, mm. I Like, I like that some people don't think about it. I, I think it adds a level of complexity to the game um, and I, I like, I actually like the counting it. nature though. I like it. Like, yeah. I like it that you got to, you know, we talk about the ace mentality where it's like, Hey, acknowledge the best play, communicate the best play and then embrace reality. The embrace reality part of league is actually what makes it kind of fun because you don't know what's going to happen. Like, if the game was like, you know, if the game was really like this beautiful macro play where if you think about it, it's like, all we right, can we, see dragon or give yeah, dragon. Yeah, it's like, we all know there's a dragon here, guys. We're all going to do it. And it's just going to turn to a raw team fight. And obviously there's fun. There's team fights and skirmishes, positioning, target selection, whatever. But I kind of like the chaotic aspect. Yeah, because you know? definitely in terms of my coaching, sometimes when the game's viewed that way, people's gameplay becomes too rigid. And yeah. sometimes you can... Even though it may be a numbers disadvantage, you can win a dragon fight. You know, you can you can mess you, can, you know you can mess around here. You know what I yeah. mean. So that's what I found is that especially with my coaching, because you know the way that I view the game is very structured. You know, like I'll be like, actually, you could fight this. I mean, for sure, even though it's numbers disadvantage, because you've got a HP advantage here, and that might make things a little bit. Too it could actually or it could actually make it more complicated in a weird way because it's ruin. It, you're actually reducing the free flow aspect of it. And yeah. People are overthinking it. Overthinking. And- Thinking like everyone's gonna think in that moment, are we gonna concede? We have to give. You're like the AD courage, just like mechanics max, and now you like suddenly got this vote pop up on your screen. Like, huh? <laughs> I gotta take away this we, this trade, and now they've got this okay. thing popping up on my screen. Like, I gotta think about. And you just objective. kill someone, but we voted no, so let's walk away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if the vote is three? Yeah. Yeah. What happens? Yeah. Or, or well, let's say okay, it's three and two. That means we have to contest because the majority said we do it. And then, or you got some people that don't give a shit and always say yes. I don't know. Yeah, if it's, it's three so or weird. two, it's a bit. And then, and then, because there might still be the disagreement. If it's three and two, people are like, well, no, you guys are idiots. But the I three. think you know the one thing that I that is is interesting is that it, it actually removes the um, it removes the the hierarchy. So okay, so if you think about mm. a game, right? Like if you're a a uh, a five and O Yone mid, right? Your opinion matters more. Yes. So, but 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 now, in it, when it comes to the vote, everyone's votes anonymous. So it's like we don't know who's saying yes and who's saying no. If I'm a five and zero owner and I don't want that, I don't give a flying fuck what anyone else thinks because I'm this not. Is true. It, it, the game is played around me. Mm. But if 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 it's four, imagine if it's four one, we want to contest, but I'm the owner and I want to give that for top two top towers and rift top. Right? What happens? Because it exceptional point. So so it's like no hierarchy. There's no. Yeah. Because the hierarchy shifts in every game. In that's role right. to role, who's strong. Your opinion matters less mm. in games where you're behind. Mm. Like if I'm a 0-3 jungler, dude, like, dude, I'm not I couldn't care that. less. It's yeah. not up to you. It's like you just yeah, got to say whatever to someone else does, yeah. you just got to compliment them, right? My opinion just doesn't mean anything that game. Yeah. So, so in a way, like I like the way they're thinking in terms of getting people to, to resolve conflict I'm, I'm viewing it at a very high level like they're trying to remove the conflict between people right like or i guess not remove like um lower the intensity of the conflict in some way shape or form by increasing the communication right and i think it will work to a certain degree but this dragon one specifically it seems 
like one of those ideas where it's like around the boardroom table where it's good in theory. In theory yeah, this is this is such a good social experiment. Like I yeah. like the testing things like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. But it, to me, in my practice, hunch is that yeah. in practice, it's going to be a shit show, yeah. and it's actually going to be ignored. I think most of the time. Mm. Like I, that's my 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 hunch. People just won't. Poke people the will just like say fuck it. Like yeah. I don't really get it. like whether it says no or yes. Like it's not going to change my behavior. My behavior in game. Mm. That's what I think is mm. likely going to happen. Very very interesting. So we'll see. We'll uh, this see. is something that we're definitely going to. But the to other see. pings though, like the the ping wheel with all this like holding it, I like that. That's I actually good. do really yeah. like that because that's they're actually acknowledging when you actually think about that. They're acknowledging the that there are now kind of set concepts in the game. Mm. Right, like mm. when the pings first came out, there were concepts like, for example, freezing and baiting, and ho- like these weren't like uh, recognized concepts, but now they're really recognized. The game's like evolving. If you're, if you're right? a new player to the game, you'd be like, "Hmm, what does hold me?" And then you'll start thinking, and then you might yeah. explore that concept. You explore that concept, but back in the day, there was like no concepts in a way. It's like everyone just playing around, and you, this is the sign of a game maturing. Like there's now ingrained terms that. That is there. Inbuilt in the game. Inbuilt in the game. Like we know what a freeze is or a hold or a bait. Like that's like, it's common knowledge. But back in the day, that wasn't really common knowledge. figure it out, yeah. So it's interesting to see like what terms will become common knowledge as we, as the game developing and gets more mature, Mm. you know? Hmm. Very interesting. All right. The next one here is off screen pings. The last communication change we have for you is a small quality of life update that will notify which direction an off screen ping came from by displaying it on the edge of your screen. Enemy missing pings. Oh, so, so for example, let's say Nathan, your camera is panned on, like, say you're on your, you're doing your blue buff and then you see like a danger ping, it will show you on the corner of your screen what side it's coming from. So like say imagine like imagine you're on blue on blue side and then like your top lane of pink's danger that you'll see like a bit of a red thing on the top of uh, your screen. I'm assuming that's what they mean. Is that right? Yeah, that could get really annoying. But that could be annoying if is the pings everywhere it'd be it would be like a rainbow on your screen, you know, around the edges. I don't know. I, 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 it says I, enemy missing pings will show on your screen regardless of where they are pinged on the map while retreat on my way assist me, hold all in and push pings will only be displayed if the ping if they're pings within 3,000 units. Ah. I, I think that seems to be largely directed at junglers, isn't it? It's to, it's to get, it's to, it's to educate. It's ma- again, this is, um, it's to make the jungler's life a little bit easier, isn't it? Because like, say, say for example, the jungler's busy like doing their camp and then the top laner says like ping assists like on the wave or something. As a jungler, you might be tunnel vision on your camp, but then if you see something on your screen, you might want to. You're going to be more incentivized to like pan your camera you. because it's like legit yeah, on your screen. Because when you when you see a ping on the minimap, it's so small. Yeah. A lot of the time, you're not going to like look at it. Hmm. I'm, I'm just spitballing here. I'm assuming yeah, what no. the, that's what they mean. I mean, they said it's a small quality of life. So right. Next one here is vision system updates. Uh, your team ward tracking. While there are currently ways to see how many wards you have out, there isn't a quick way to check which wards are closest to expiring other than manually looking at every ward place. We're introducing new ward visuals on the minimap that will indicate when wards are close to expiring. They'll change appearance when wards reach 60 and 30 seconds remaining before they expire. It's a cool little niche thing. Enemy ward timers. It can be hard to keep track of every single ward that gets placed on the map and even harder to successfully communicate that information to your teammates. Now, if you ping an enemy ward that you saw then place within the last 10 seconds, a perfectly accurate ward timer will appear until the ward is removed or expires. Wait, so can you, can, so how's that work specifically? So that's saying that, you know, when you pick, ping that there's a ward there, mm. a perfectly accurate ward timer will appear. So it must automatically show how long until that ward will expire. Whoa. Also, if they place it and you, ty- you press that ping. Yeah. Right. Oh, within 10 seconds. Right. Interesting. It's just definitely making the game very structured, isn't it? They're definitely making the game a lot more structured. So where would that, so where where does the timer appear? So I'm assuming on the minimap. On the water in the chat or timestamp. Or or it could be on the ward. Yeah. Like when you pan your camera where that, bushes it'd be like a timer over it 
I mean, for competitive, that's unbelievable. Like in terms of, <laughs> I think everywhere, dude. I think even in solo queue, that's really, really big. Wow, okay, that's interesting. We'll we'll talk about broader topic about you know I think that making the game you know a bit more easier uh, in a moment. Yeah, but that's let's, let's we'll, we'll pin that one for now. Yeah, that's an that's a that's an interesting one. Um. So now loadout and ability recommendations, recommended rune pages and summoner spells. Another change we're excited to introduce are optimal recommended rune pages and summoner spells in champ select. Once you lock in your champion, you'll see a recommended runes button to the left of the edit runes page button. Opening this interface will display up to three rune and summoner spell setups you will be able to select to use in game. This system is still being fine tuned, so you can expect to see more on this later in the preseason. These recommendations will be updated once per patch and are informed by what setups are optimal and popular. Of course, where you're always welcome to theory craft and bring whatever loadouts do you want. So I think this one is a great quality of life thing for yeah, new players. For new, new players, yeah. You know, I think that most people know the, yep. the optimal when you, pages. If, you're, if, if you've played the game for a while. Game, you know, and, and it is a bit annoying. Like I think players that come back and come forth, you know, it's like they want to know what's up, what's what's going on. Yeah, I like, think it's fine. You know? So, yeah. you know, having it inbuilt, I think is deal. good. So that's that's good. Recommended abilities. That's a bit weird to me, though. I think there's a bit too much. We're also helping players in game providing them with recommended ability level ups. They will indicate which abilities are typically ranked up at each level and similar to the above. Will be updated once a patch based on what is currently optimal. So let's put a pin in that one as yeah, well. Put a pin in that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, top lane changes. We're also making some adjustments to help top laners scale faster and hit those key item and level breakpoints faster relative to mid and bot. The changes will be as follows. Solo lane experience. Solo lanes will now receive 95% experience multi multiplier. Previously was 93% from minions. Okay. Duo lane experience. Duo lanes will now receive a 22% bonus experience multiplier, which was previously 24%. So it got lowered. Yeah. Yeah. Mid lane gold changes. All minions spawned in the mid lane will now be worth one less gold before 14 minutes when last hit. Previously, only counter minions were worth less gold, but were, but were worth 10 less gold. So they, they, So it feels like what they're thinking now is that they feel like maybe top laners have been a little bit on the weaker side of the game. Relative which, to other roles. Relative to other roles, which I... Do you think so? From a feel perspective? Or, or does it have like a very... I mean, top laners have massive impact later in the That's game because of the, the TP and the split push potential, right? Like the way that I view it, it's like each role has their, you know, got to do your job, right? And top laners have that. That's what I'm thinking. Like, like at least Oof. for me, I'll be honest. I mean, again, our, our opinion on this is not the best. Because we're not top right? laners. Because we're not top laners, but... From a field perspective, I ban top laners most of my games. Like Aatrox is out of control. Really, I ban Fiora and Yone top yeah. all the time. Yeah, There's the Yone top player in Oast that I ban all the time. I can't stand. There's a few heaps of Fiora players that I can't. We can't deal with. I can't deal with anyway. Um, yeah, Aatrox get out. I I don't feel, at least in my games, I don't feel like top is underpowered. It's it's. Yeah, maybe it does scale with Elo. Scale with Elo, okay. In the sense that to good top lane is because what happens in and Rivens as well, like they're really annoying. Like what happens in our, in our game typically is that a Riven or a Fiora, whatever that, that's doing well, they'll get pick up or an Aatrox, they'll pick up one or two kills top in a solo kills or something. Then they'll roam down at like 10 minutes or whatever and just win a dragon fight and just staunch everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so uh, it sounds like they they're, they're more pushing like the carry top lane meta to come back more so. Maybe then they maybe this is also maybe yeah. tanks because now it's like Camille, Fiora and stuff they're going to get the item spike sooner. I don't know. So that so essentially what they're saying is top laners will have the most experience in gold in the game. Wow. It's very interesting. Scary. 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 <laughs> Scary. I mean as we know Rod's very good at adjusting things yeah, quickly, right? Adjust. But again, you know, as you said, that thing in big picture, it's mm. like, what does Riot think? Riot thinks that top laners, or maybe the narrative in general, that, you know, maybe it struggles. Especially I mean, I'll say laners. Riot typically know best, so yeah. I, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt there. All right. Um, new and updated items. We're in introducing 12 new and updated items in this preseason. Do you want to go through the items or just... 
Let's look at maybe some interesting. I think ones. the only core ones. I mean, I, the, the big one I did want to talk about was Rod of Ages. Yeah, Rod of Ages is a, is an OG. It's a very popular item. Was a popular item until it got removed. A lot of people were upset with the Rod of Ages removal. So let me just look here. So we have well, of the twelve, we have one, two, three, four, five mythic items. So mythics have been giving more. I mean, mythics are really important in the game because that's the that's the diversity, right? That's that's really set in the tone. Aren't most of, of them tank items? Yeah, that's most, right. Yeah, I think they're mostly they're tank items. Yeah, they're lots of health and stuff like that. So there, uh, it looks like in general they're making mythics more suitable for tanks because yeah, tank mythics are very one dimensional. Bit weird. If you think about how many tank mythics compared there are to every other role amount of mythics it's yeah ridiculous, you think of like right? an 80 carry mythic they have like so many options gale yeah. force shield bow yeah crack and slayer and then you think of mid yeah Luden, but those Everfrost. those items are used on other roles remember? and other roles as like, well like you know like belveth is building crack and slayer the junglers and stuff like can that, build right? it yeah mid laners like, can tanks, build it <laughs> tanks is like basically and chem tanks being nerfed a lot so oh, it's like you have two options sunfire, sunfire was built on a lot of champions yeah, that's true. That was pretty thing. But in terms of, again, options and diversity. It was either what? Sunfire, Sunfire or Frost. Or Frostfire. Right, and then it. one's either better or the other in the current. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. It's not really, that's not very exciting for yeah, it's a not tank player, is it? But, yeah, but for damage in general. I feel for like roles. they've always struggled to, to, to do that with tank items. Yeah. Just, tanks are just such a hard thing to we balance. We talked about that with Proxy. Because again, right? HP. Yeah. Tankiness. It's, it's Tankiness very... is hard to balance. Oh, so Curtis, the Rod of yeah, Ages Rod of Ages. one? So I actually think the, you know, when, when Roa got removed, I think a lot of people like Roa because it's it's the definition of like an easy to execute item. And So like, Rod of Ages is a mythic, so that's a core. Is it, a, is it actually a mythic? Yeah, it's a mythic, Ah, look. ah interesting. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Because so, remember, Rod of Ages was so good because it was just like a, it's just a normal you stack item. it up and it's like a second item or something like nah, that. No, so yeah, so what people, okay, so... The, the function of Roa, it was really good because it solved all of your resource problems, right? It gives you, it gives you HP, it gives you the, the passive on it, whatever you get the, 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 well, you want to read out the passive on the, on the catalyst. Uh, so the. Read the passive on the catalyst. The item gains 20 health, 20 mana and four ability power every minute up to 10 times for yeah. a maximum of 200 health, 200 mana yeah. and 40 ability power. And upon reaching max stacks, gain a level. So you uh, level cap will still remain at eight. And the base and the base. What's the base hey, on the cap? Okay, yeah, what does this mean? Upon reaching max stacks, gain a level. That's what. Wait, says. is that on roller or on catalyst? Rod of Ages. Yeah, read catalyst, dude. dude you first. Here, Curtis, you read this. Yeah, let, let me read this. You're butchering this, dude. I don't know shit, dude. <laughs> okay, so let's start first with the catalyst because the catalyst is the component. Well, then we'll get to the rower. So catalyst That's gives you sense. two, but they don't give you the gold. They haven't decided on the gold amount, which is very important. Um, but anyway, catalyst is two, 225 health, 300 mana. And the eternity passive is the most important one because it restores mana equal to 15% of damage taken from champions and health equal to 20% of mana spent up to 15 health per cast and toggled abilities can only heal up for 15 health per second, which is, okay, so that was traditionally really good in champs like Anivia, Swain, Rise, like lower range. Because you're tanky, you could permanently wave clear and you don't die, you that's do right. damage. That's right. Um, that's right, yeah. Rise, Swain, Anivia, even Cassidy. These are champions that really thrive with this. And if you actually think about the, um, actually, then we'll read the Roa and the, itself and then we'll get to the, who builds it. So Roa, all right, fuck, here we go. So 60 AP, 300 health, 300 mana. This item gains 20 health, 20 mana, and four ability power every minute up to 10 times. So that means, yeah, max 200 health, 200 mana, and 40 AP. Upon reaching max stacks, gain a level. You actually gain a level. That can't be right. No, but think about it. So that, so up to 10 times every minute. So it takes 10 minutes to fully stack. Grants all other legendary items five ability haste, which is very nice. Ability haste is really nice on a mythic passive. So if you think about when you complete a mythic, you complete a mythic roughly by what? Level nine or something? When do you finish more than that? I can't. Standard mythic, you'll get around 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah. A fast mythic is like eight minutes. That's like, right. Okay. So, so, um, that would be like an uh, you'll be level you'll be level seven. Okay. And be sort of, sort so let's think eight. about let's think about the champions that struggled as a result of the removal of Roa, right? Like uh 
like teams like Rise and Swain and Anivia and Cassidy, they all str- they all had to default a lot of the time to Everfrost or Crown. Crown was really popular on Cassidy. Everfrost was really popular because they bring HP. But Crown is just really niche. And then you're stuck with Everfrost. And Everfrost is good, don't get me wrong, but um and actually, sorry, to, to another tangent, Swain, a lot of we saw a lot of Rylai's rush. We saw Imperial Mandate because um they're cheaper and they give um tankiness. So in a way, they probably um were thinking, okay, this is a bit weird. People are not even building a mythic first on these champions. Um that must be we, we must be missing something here. Um, I think the 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 complexity of not building a mythic, I think that has to be removed from the game. That's right. You I should have game, to build a mythic. That makes the game very confused. Like that, I hated that whole chem, chem punk chainsword meta when it's just like right. junglers just first item rush in that. It just like yeah. be, like imagine a player like a gold player or a new player looking at so that confusing. and competitive is like wait is it, doesn't everyone build mythic? Like explain this to me. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, the only outlier is Bork, right? Bork is the only other one because Bork's a legendary item and Lorelia's rush Bork a yeah. lot of the time. So Bork's kind of like an outlier. It yeah. is a bit confusing. But um, so yeah, I think this will change all This will bring potentially bring back TF because the other thing as well, I, I'd be interested to see how much Catalyst actually costs. Um, you would have to build first item. Uh, you're either going to rush your lost chapter so Catalyst is the component. Yeah, right? the component. It usually it used to be built out of Catalyst and it last used to be ones. three thirteen hundred gold, right? Catalyst gold. was like eleven hundred or something. Eleven hundred. Yeah. So 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 hear me out here. If you're a say you're a Swain, or let's say let's say you want to build or, no, let's not see. Let's use the example of like Rise or something. You'd get tier and then you'd want to build towards your Everfrost or something. The components of of one of the mythics, if we take like a um an Everfrost or a crown, you would build Either the lost chapter, which doesn't give any HP, but it gives you mana, or they, or you would build the Kindle gem, right? And the Kindle gem gives HP, it gives ability haste, but you don't get the mana. So then you have to build two full items or components before you get both the HP and the mana. So you have to make a choice a lot of the time. And, and lost chapter is expensive; it's thirteen hundred, um, and that's why people would default to tier because tier. Then uh, this actually might make tier more niche because. Tier was only built because you need the mana component because otherwise you've just got room in the early game. So, um, yeah, this will change a lot. It might bring TF back. It's going to mix up the build paths with a lot of these core champs that I've been mentioning. And, um, yeah, I'm interested to see how much it actually costs. I think the cost is very important here because one of the big benefits of Everfrost and Crown is how cheap they cheaper, were yeah. comparatively. And so, when people built Mandan and stuff like that. Yeah, same cheap, as Mandan, Rylize as well. So, so it'll be interesting how expensive it is. It's also a good noob item. Like, I think Rod of Ages is a really good noob item. You cut this out if you want, but, like, the champion that is going to break it is Kassadin. Kassadin, breaking it. it that, what stands out to me from that is, like, it gives you a level. So, champions that wants to hit level 11 is so important. Level 11, level 13. Level 13 when you have two abilities. Right. Level, Kassadin, yeah, the level, level the level thing seems a little bit interesting. Kassadin, you have Rod, Get a free level. Get a free level. Yeah, that's yeah that concepts. is true. So basically, if you didn't, if if Charles Charles not doesn't have a mic, but he said it could break champions like Cassidy and who want levels because you just get Roa scale and you get that extra level when you get max stacks. But it does take ten minutes to kick in, though. You got to remember that. Yeah, you're still hitting a level eleven. With like a few minutes. No, but no, but by the time you get Roa, it should, you'd be already by level stacks. eleven anyway. I yeah, think so yeah. Think about it. You'd be twenty. Be 20 you'd already have Roa by by level. It'd be at twenty minutes in the game. What level are you at? Twenty minutes. Because you'll finish roll by t- 10, 10 minutes, minutes roughly, and right? Takes or nine minutes. 10 minutes to stack. It takes 10 minutes to stack. Oh, Wait, what it would help you get to minutes. 16. Yeah, help you get to 16. It would help you get to 16. Yeah, which matters less. Well, it okay. still matters a lot. Cassadin does really does, need 16. Yeah, 16 that, that, yeah, it's still relevant. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not, it's not yeah. uh, you know. But again, with, with everything, when it comes to items, like I'm so feel oriented. Like too, I'm really yeah. bad with numbers and timings and all that crap. Like I need to feel it out. Me too. Um, so we won't dabble more on this. The interesting ones here, Sunfire Aegis is no longer a mythic. Okay. And Chem Tank is no longer a mythic. Oh, yeah. We forgot about Chem Tank. It is actually a tank mythic before. We're saying how there's two options. Chem Tank Yeah, well, option. I said that because it's, it is but it's, nerfed, dude. But it's it was just, yeah, it's just it's, a shitty, weird no item. One, no one builds it anymore. So I think that's good that they're not making that a mythic. So it looks overall in general, they've been really focused on tanks yeah. uh, in the items. Yeah. They're trying to figure the tank, tank uh, problem out. What's well, interesting though in saying that, they- Think about worlds right now. 
worlds is Sejuani and and Malka. Malka I think. Oh, they're not building. What are they building? Oh, yeah, right. Trundle <laughs> Athena is first <laughs> channel. Yeah. Oh, okay. Again, how how how, how weird confusing is that? is that for um for. No, but they're, but they're not even picking Malkai really for the tanking. They're picking Malkai just for the, the E, really. Because the, 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 the they e. buffed the sapling. The E and the engage for the ult. So the R they're really scouting good. with the E and the ult. It's like map yeah. hacks. That's what people call it. It's like map yeah, hacks. Because the e, they buff that E. The damage on it, even when you're not building AP, is like really high. Like the raw damage on it. All right. Um, all right. So now we're moving to the meat of it. The, uh, the jungle. Um, this is it. So this is uh, my time to shine, but there's also pressure on me this right now. It, this is it, Nathan. This is your livelihood, the ju- the jungle. All right. So I just want to quickly note. So this is someone coming into your office and, and messing it all up. You know, someone's like moving your moving your setup and your keyboard, and you know, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, this is a little bit. All right. So uh, <laughs> they're adding avatar smites and jungle pets. Well, they're just removing the change in the smite system. Um, but it says here, the jungle is a dangerous place and it's dangerous to go alone. So take one of these jungle pets by purchasing them in the game shop as an egg. These pets will acquire treats through monster kills and slowly over time as the game progresses, which will help them evolve. Once evolved, pets will give their owners avatar buffs, which empower them with different abilities. Uh, this, there's this pet looking for junglers that play more aggressively. It provides slows and bonus damage. There's another pet uh, for junglers looking to frontline and tank for their teams. It will provide a shield based on your health that provides bonus slow, resist, and tenacity. And then the third pet is for junglers looking to rotate and move around the map more quickly. So it's okay. like three styles. So I'll say it looks like a tank one, a, like an aggressive one, and then like a, an assassin one that looks like an assassin one, like okay. you know Zed and Karzix and all that sort of stuff. That wants and Talon and Kane and stuff. Leash range indicators. In an effort to make the jungle more welcoming to players unfamiliar with the role, we'll be adding visual leash indicators that will show how far camps can be pulled before their patience starts diminishing. We're also decreasing the distance camps can be pulled, so no more having to stand on the perfect pixel in order to hyper optimize your jungle clears. So let's put a pin on that as well because that's the bigger topic i think we're gonna we're gonna go into soon about you know riot's big picture approach of making the game looks like new easier for new players because the whole double camping and perfecting your clear that's definitely a very niche part of the player base very high level i mean i personally i i don't really think that much about that my clears and that's just something i just don't um, personally i'm not that excited and stuff so that's great for uh for me makes the game more simple as well because i like that i like thinking bigger picture about the game and then recommended jungle paths. Another addition we have to help make the jungle more accessible, a recommended jungle path for every champion. These first clear paths will be determined by gathering data from high school junglers and their high mastery champs across the globe. Pathing and recommendations are based on which routes most often led these players to a victory and will be updated each patch. That's interesting as well. Let's put a pin in that for very, as well. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. So I'll just get into the nitty gritty now of the the notes that our producer sent me about jungling. Uh, so he thinks big picture. Oh, so right now items cost four hundred and fifty, so you can't get refillable potion anymore. It's not like the blue smart refillable potion. But you don't need it, right? Because you get more sustain from the jungle pets. So yeah, it's that's negligible. Right. Yeah, which again I think is a great change. I think that it's always weird because it, it it was a bit. Uh, sometimes I have people come join Salty and they like they don't do no refillable potion or they do a control ward or something like again these things that are you know maybe a bit more for advancing could scare off newer players uh fast junglers are slower and slow junglers are faster that's in terms of the jungle clear so this is all stuff on the pve pve increased hp on camps but pet does lots of damage regardless of a champ so there is more um it also does aoe so this will help junglers that are really bad at doing raptors and stuff because right now the meta in terms of junglers and all sort of stuff it's you got to do your raptors if you can't do your raptors the champion in general struggles in the game so these pets are basically it's really harping on you've got to be a jungler to get your camp so laners are probably going to struggle to get camps even more now which i think is a really yeah it's fine I, I think that's good i think that's good i like that direction uh, off-meta junglers have um, caught up in a lot of their clears. Jack, Set, and Quinn can clear by 320. 
This is the big one. Crab now spawns at three minutes, 30 seconds with no shield. So, you know, champs like Graves and stuff were so good because you just auto attack and break the shield, right? And other junglers really struggled to get Crab like Karzix and Nidalee. And it was so painful to get Crab if you didn't have Smite. So again, making it, making it, uh, more definitely looks like they're making trying to make it more diverse in terms of the jungle pool because you know getting to the crab on 315 yeah especially how the crabs lost a lot of priority and stuff like that recently i like these change a lot as well god these jungle changes are, are very interesting in terms of the way the meta and stuff will shape like this is fascinating to me already so it's harder for landers to take pets because they don't have pets uh, both you and the monster need to be outside of the patient range for it to reset Patience regenerates faster and is generally kinder if you mess up. You can't double camp, but you can double camp transition. Smart doesn't heal anymore. Every camp heals, not just Gromp, but they heal way less. Zero Omni event for junglers, so they can't heal to full all off one camp in mid game. Um, sustain is great in early clear from the pet. And they increase the smart from 450 to 600, level one. 900 smite rank 2 after 20 camps which will be eight minutes ish and has a damage and slow and then 1200 smite around uh, around the 13 minute mark what was it before it was just so before it was either 450 and then 900 that once it was upgraded i think that's kind of good though because um they can secure objectives yeah there was definitely champs in the game so many champs that could outsmite you outsmite you like with a bit ability yeah which was definitely like leblanc and echo and yeah a few others yeah lux alt and lux. stuff like that um three camps one side is still level three and full clear is still level four so they're keeping all that all right nathan let's now let's now let's now talk about this holistically all right it's a lot of information there's here. a lot of information yeah I've got my. I've got a few opinions. You start. You're the master. So you start off, and then I'll, I'll, I'll riff off you. All right. So, um, I'm just going to look at some of my. So I took some screenshots here, that I'm going to look at. So this is from um, from Proxon. So it gets rights perspective. Though, so he made some tweets. Okay. We're focusing on accessibility with features like jungle path ability. Um, whoops, uh, ability rune recommendations showing leash ranges this season. Veteran players have suffered through learning obtuse mechanics the hard way, but does that mean we should gatekeep newer players to also to do so? Clear optimizations are important to retain, but they clearly consume too much jungle power budget, which prevents us from putting power in more intuitive and satisfying places for all players. This also reduces design debt for champion design to have to put AOE on all jungle kits. So it looks like they're very identifying things. So that's some perspective. And I think that was a bit response because the, so sort of my where I want to go with this is, um, you know, I, I gather information from Twitter and look at the Halo community, which is mainly on Twitter. And when these changes were initially released, people were very, especially the high Halo players were like, ah, oh, come on, complain. It's like, God, you know, you're making the game like so easy. It's like, what do we get for being highly players? Like spending all the time, like we feel like we're sort of getting shot in the, um, shot in the foot a little bit. And then there's this funny uh, tweet that was, this has really encompassed the, the, the high elo veteran players response to these changes is can't wait for season 16 when they finally make it. So you can't leave fountain pre one minute, five seconds to prevent invades deep wards, cheeses or early fights from happening. And everyone's summer and ultimate cooldowns will be shown globally on the scoreboard for both teams to see. <laughs> and for little warning sim symbols to appear on over enemy chance where their spills or spells are about to come off cooldown. So people can back off in time and not accidentally. So that's sort of just, it's like this meme of like, you just yeah. have all this, all this information. Everything's yeah. there. Right. So that's like really encompasses it. Right. And then Proxon's going on to say, you know, it's like, and this is the battle, you know, that I think we we really understood from the the patch notes, and we have to really empathise for the new player base coming in because, you know, a lot of that these changes they're aiming at. I'm just going to get up the, um, you know, the the initial patch notes. So the things that we identified as things that maybe were making the game potentially were controversial too easy was leech range indicators so that's the whole double camping which is a insane skill for champs like fiddlesticks and stuff like these champs are actually very difficult even scary for people to play because if you can't do the full clear properly you're like finishing at 340 and that's just a champ gone from possible for new players uh recommended jungle paths 
Um, yeah, that one is... Yeah, going back to our conversation about things being too structured potentially, like jungle, I feel like can be very versatile. You know, you're talking about the whole three camp mid gank that you're talking about. Like that wouldn't be recommended for a lot of these, you know, the full clear junglers. And you, you show me an example of a Udia three champion into mid gank and being really effective and stuff. I'm really curious to see how that goes. And I can see how that can be controversial. Um, the other ones was enemy war timers, which we said, you know, that's pinging people's like literally give you an automatic update on how long a ward will expire or not. And the recommended abilities and recommended room pages, we thought that that was fine anyway. So yeah, I definitely feel like there's definitely a disconnect between the high elo community and, you know, the, the new player base guys, we got to really realize how important new players come in into the game Let's let's use an analogy here, Curtis. Of six-year-old Jimmy, what's what's our what's our usual name, Curtis, that we have for that? Jim Bob. Uh, Jim Bob. No, I think Jim Bob should be an. Oh, that sounds like an older person. Okay. Let's have Timmy. 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 Six-year-old Timmy. Okay. Okay. You know, six-year-old Timmy. You know, he's he's gonna he has access to the internet. He's eventually gonna you know play a game and you know invest a lot of time into it. You know. Let's say, and he, let's say he, he's like, okay, competitive. He wants to play competitive games, right? You know, and, and you get, you look at League of Legends, right? And you just see like this pool of like, you know, 140 champions. You know, you look up all this, all this information, all these guides and stuff. You got to figure out all these things when you come in, like, um, you know, like, you know, runes, items, all that sort of stuff. It's, the game is goddamn intimidating for new players, Um already as it is and you know these these changes that they've suggested i think in general like these these are things that like we've done thousands of reviews curtis right i would say that do you spend much energy on like the, the whole i mean I, I guess this is more centered to jungle i think that's where the big controversy was like the, the clear and stuff like that i like i feel like that that's people think it's like that's game changes that's not really where that differentiates high low and low low yellow players it's definitely a skill that if you full clear you know you have a little bit of an edge over but overall you want to play league of legends right you know playing around waves out mechanic in someone uh in the mid game map awareness you know setting up objectives like actual game stuff rather than all this stuff around it that i think that i, I like that we're rise focusing on putting less energy to all these little niche things that you've got to be a player that spends thousands of hours of the game to get these things really high level so that's what I feel like. I think that Riot should be moving to this direction because, you know, as a, I feel like that these changes in general, again, maybe aside from like the the ward track timer is good for the game and it's very helpful for new players because, yeah, like the, the new player base is so important for the for the health of the game and to keep like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of you high elo players on, on, on social media and stuff like that, you know, you're going to, you know, we're not all full-time players or pro players, you know, make, we're going to have, you know, get full-time jobs and we're going to be playing the game less. And the people that will take over and be leaders of is, is six-year-old Timmy, who's going to, you know, play the game and he needs to learn the game quickly and, you know, get, you know, high elo and sort of like lead the scene and like the next generation of pro players and stuff like that. So I think it's really important. That's my rant. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, now, where I want to start to riff off what you said, you know, I, I kind of feel like all of these opinions are very um, irrelevant until we agree upon the foundation of what is the jungle role. Okay. So we can talk all day long about uh jungle leash you know you know leash ranges and whether you can do two camps at once and how much you heal off a camp and all this crap right we can talk about that for hours but until we can really agree on what is jungle what is the jungle role? what what purpose does the jungle role serve on the summoner's rift until we can agree upon that nothing else really matters to me so when i listen to your opinion and listen and hearing other people's opinions it's kind of like you're all arguing on differing levels in a way. So, you know, from my perspective, there's the crowd of people. Like right now, I view myself as like, I'm kind of like, I, I view myself as like, um, you know, the show Big Brother. I'm like the, 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 I'm like the guy who's like watching all the cameras and like there's all these people in different rooms and they all are from like a different uh, 
belief or a different line of thought, right? So then you've got, say, one room filled with people that they get a lot of enjoyment out of, like, the the clearing and maximizing, min-max. min-maxing time and pulling camps and, like, you know, all these very small, minute details about how to get the most efficient clear. Then you've got another camp of people that um, they they don't really care about camps at all and they're all about ganking lane. They just want to kill people and gank and fight. Fight, gank, fight, gank, just kill shit, right? Then you've got people like yourself, which are like more centered around the map and like how to play the map holistically and and create win conditions and objectives and and like that. All of you are playing the jungle in a very differing way. And and all of you um you all don't value the same things the same way. In mid lane, I would say it's a little bit more simple because at the end of the day, you can't really dispute the importance of CS and XP. Like you can't dispute the importance of lane phase. Like lane phase is lane phase at the end of the day. Lane phase has a very objective value. Like it's very easy to measure objectively the value of a lane phase and how the lane phase impacts the game as a whole. Whereas in jungle, it's not re- I mean, it's harder to make that argument because um, there are so many ways to play jungle. And I feel like the, the real complex thing about the role of jungle is that, you know, I, no one knows what the role of it's just it's it's a weird role in a way. Jungle, I view like league is the four it's the three lanes, and then jungles is weird. It's like the awkward middle child of the family where it doesn't really fit in anywhere, and the skill set is so broad that it's up for interpretation. And so, um, I think that we first need to really understand that there is no definition of what the jungle role should be. That's why these conversations are so difficult to have. Mm. So I think that's the first thing. I think the second thing is that um, you're spot on. Um, The game is already very overwhelming, but I think that what League have done a very poor job of, Riot have done a very poor job of, is really explaining the beauty of the jungle role. So I believe and you believe, I'm, I'm aligned with you on this, that jungle is about the map. Jungle is about utilizing fog of war to create advantages macro wise and influence lanes and just you're 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 there to play the map. That's what the jungle role is. You're you're everywhere, right? You influence the map. The game isn't really about you. I fundamentally believe the jungle role is by concept kind of like a facilitator role. Although you can play carry oriented styles in jungle, I don't really believe. It, 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 this is kind of kind of like a again a subjective thing. This is my opinion. I, I don't be- damn biased laner just wants the jungler to play around him. Yeah, but I believe the game is at its healthiest state when when the when the jungle role is more about facilitating lanes and interacting more with lanes. Doesn't that remove the option to play facilitate mid laners? Like the, then there's the combo of facilitate mid lane and carry jungler. You think that that's what happens to if that's the case? Oh, but because then facilitated mid laners and facilitated junglers. Let's say we're playing Rexai Galio, we can just keep diving bot lane. But but then you know, let's say if you have Galio Sejuani, is that a good combo? It's not a good combo, right? And I'm, I mean, you can you can nitpick about everything, right? Yeah. That's a shitty situation, <laughs> right? But then then in that situation, would probably dive top and bar, dive bot. That's the adaptation. You wouldn't play yeah. to mid, right? You would just ignore mid, which is, I mean, I'd, I'd hope the Sidrani would ignore mid and then would just go aside. My point, the point I'm trying to make here is that I believe that jungle fundamentally is about the map, right? And so when we think about jungle clear, and I'm, I'm assuming that maybe the way Riot is trying to push it is that it's less so about the small details about the camps mm. and how you kite the camps and all that crap. They want people to think more holistically about the game. That's why I interpret these changes. I think they're pushing the player to think less mental stack on how they kite a camp and what's happening in the lanes. They want junglers to pan their camera to lanes more. Hence why the pings are being shown up on the map more. There's all the, it's this change is beautifully aligned with the communication changes. They want there to be more emphasis on objectives, lane states, waves versus playing League of Legends. Playing League of Legends holistically. Yes. But you're saying you have this broad term thing playing League of Legends, but that's that's your definition of playing League of Legends. Okay. Playing League of Legends it could can be mean for everything. a trillion okay, things that. for many many people out there. Yeah. Like when I I I I uh, what's the word? Um, we know what I dec- is it, What's the word decrypting? When you have a message that's all in code and you, yeah, I, I'm decoding that sentence. I'm just play League of Legends as to play the map. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Is that right? Yep. Like you like to play the map. Yeah. Um. So yes, I believe. 
right, is ushering the people at a very max, at a very high level to think more about the map and less about camps. Now, yes, that impacts those people in that one little room that care a lot about camp optimization and how to do the max clear. But it's like, I don't think they give a fuck. Like, I really think it's like, okay, we're going to piss off a handful of people, but that's such a small amount of people. And even if it's the high elo community, it's such a small segment of the high elo community that it doesn't even matter, mm. right? At the end of the day. And, 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 and the whole path recommendation thing, I even think that's a small change because that just because someone recommends you to path a certain way doesn't mean... A jack shit. Like it's, yeah. it's for noobs. And, it's and for noobs that don't for know how to yeah. path. Because yeah, you just ignore. Or you're just you gonna ignore it. Or like yeah, you're gonna yeah. disable it. You, you don't. You don't give a, a shit. Yeah, really. If you it's think just about a noob it. thing, which is it's great. Just, which is, great. is actually really good. It, it helps the accessibility for yes. jungles. Jungles is such an intimidating role. No, and jungles a dead role. No one plays jungle, dude. Jungle is the least popular role, and on top of that, a lot of people don't play jungle because it's like they don't feel. It's like a different game. Yeah, it's right? a different game. Yeah. Like a lot of people play lanes and then they'll go to jungle later. It's very like most people don't play jungle at the start. It's kind of like the people that don't really want to play league properly. It's like they don't want to interact with lanes. Like they're scared. They're intimidated about laning. So they just want to play jungle. That's so, me. That's why I started playing jungle. So in a way, I actually feel yeah. like they want jungle to be more accessible for to to to, to make it a more uh, accessible role and more people play it. And then... Um, but in a way, I feel like Riot wouldn't have had to do this if they just released a few videos that were directly on the client, like Jungling 101. The jung this is what the jungle can do and explain the beauty and the fun of jungle. Like the way you teach jungle is so, and the way you, exp you think of the game, it's so different to how people view the, the jungle role. Like you've created, or well, you've kind of like reverse engineered how jungle should be played by yourself like you didn't you didn't like you didn't get taught this like no one you didn't watch a video that said here's nathan nathan here we go here's how you play this is what the jungle roll is all about you just intuitively realized over time that this is the way the jungle roll should be played and that's why you have so much fun because you see the infinite skill cap involved in panning your camera to lanes looking at wave states understanding wing cons and and what the trade-off is going to be if i go top versus go bot and skipping a camp here and shutting down that enemy yeah, jungle. What it feels to win a game through that way. You love, you're addicted to that. Yeah, I'm addicted. But but people don't view the jungle role like that. This they view true, it yeah. as like, I'm Karthus, I'm going to full clear, I'm Shivana, I'm going to full clear, I'm going to get to my and two items and carry a team fight. Mm. Those people should play lane. Those people should all actually play mid lane or they should play top or they should play AD carry. Those people who play the, the role like that shouldn't, don't actually belong in jungle, in my opinion. And I'm, you know, I'm in, in, you know, going back to the big brother analogy, I'm in one in of those room. rooms, right? I'm in one of those rooms now, but that's my opinion. So at the end of the day, this is why we can go round and round and round because your interpretation of the game or our interpretation of jungle is very, very different to where a lot, a lot of people play the game. Um, and, and that's what makes this whole thing confusing. So I think, yeah, right. I believe they're doing a good job because they're pushing them in, they're pushing that opinion kind of onto everyone that this this game isn't less it's actually less about the clearing of camps and they are making it easier which pisses off a few minor people but those people that they're pissing off right i genuinely believe that those people are, are really a lot of them are actually delusional about the other aspects of the game like they don't think about the map enough that they should and and so their mental stack is so focused on the jungle clears because they they they're not feeling incentivized to think about other things. I feel like okay, interesting. That's yeah. what that's what I think yeah. a lot of the time. Um. So yeah, that's that's like my take on 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 that whole thing. I definitely think it's definitely as you said there. When, you know, when people's opinions on these changes, you know, making thinking about the game, making it easier. Yeah, there's different camps, and I really think we do need to think about Timmy, that six year old, because he's not going to play League of Legends. He's going to play Minecraft or Roblox or something like as that. As well as on top of that. I think this makes autofill junglers way better mm. because now everyone can clear camps. Mm. Everyone can clear camps at a relatively similar speed. Everyone can jungle. And it looks like they're increasing diversity in yes. pools by the clear. That's really so top lane well. mid lane champs. I'm assuming could go to jungle as well now more yeah. often. So I think they're actually helping because that's a big problem because jungle is the least popular role. People, so many autofill junglers. And usually Autofill Jungles is like what I lost. And there is still going to be a massive advantage versus a jungler and a non-jungler. But at least now you've removed one factor because what would happen before is that one jungler knows how to clear camps, one doesn't. And the game's over at five minutes because one person doesn't literally doesn't even know how to clear the camps. Mm. But now you've removed that. At least now they can clear the camps and get to level four. Mm -hmm. 
without the game being and over. They just have to learn how to play the champion. Now they just got to learn as long as they know how to play the champ. You're already halfway there, honestly. Yep. So like, I think they're making it easier. Like that is good because now the junglers that will have to outplay other junglers. It's not about the clears. It's about the the ganks and like the map and how they impact win cons and all that stuff. Um, and how they skirmish. If you so if you're if you're a carry jungler, right? Let's say you you like to play, you know. Uh, Echo Jungle or Diana Jungle, whatever. Carthus. Right? Carthus or something, right? It does really come down to your execution. I think a lot of the time in, in team fights and skirmishes, it's not just going to be out you getting up three levels via full clearing three times, you know? Hmm. Which is good. I think that's good. Because I think Carthus and those champs, that, that, that's, the way of winning like that is so stupid, in my opinion. You get one order field jungler that doesn't know how to jungle, the other person picks Carthus. Full clears three times, and then you look at your jungle. They've failed two down. ganks, so they don't know how to gank. They and yeah. they're outscaled. <laughs> they're already outscaled by levels. <laughs> fucking... That's right. That, that's why it should be. That's why it should be. A good jungler should be able to beat a Carthus. That's right. Reliably. Um. So that's my rant in a way. So so I think um, overall, I think it's a, a step in the right direction. I think it's fantastic. I'm really excited for these yeah. changes. Um, I think it's the step in the right direction. And yeah. Because I remember as well, we had someone in my in my MLA, Josh, who was actually going to practice tour and he tested. He's like, if I'm Graze, right? And I just auto this. He was on PBE and he like ordered the red buff. He's like, I don't need to kite it. Like I can just sit here and like AFK mm. and then I can just, ki I can pan my camera wherever. Mm. So in a way, that's good. Like I like that. I want the junglers to be more aware of what's happening in the lane. You're actually reducing that mental stack, the mental capacity. I don't have to kite it up or anything. You can, I can literally just click once, take my hands off the keyboard, mm. and then do whatever I want to do. And then, mm. and then now I have to think more. I can, I can think more holistically. Mm. You're, you're going to be incentivized because what else are you going to do? All right. So now let's put ourselves in the shoes of like the maybe the more high and competitive scene, right? Nathan, I'll ask you a question. How many, <laughs> how many junglers at a pro level yeah. lose because they don't know how to clear? That's camps? the thing. That's the thing. How right? how how? It's, how it, that, it's apart not really from happening to Barbip, uh, you know, uh, uh, was it Chief's jungler in twenty twenty or whatever it was or when he didn't know how to clear his jungle at Worlds or something? <laughs> apart from that, like, yeah. um, how many times does it happen? Yeah, it's not Except the reason. Plans, it's not the, It's not the reason you lose the game. That's right. It's not the reason, and That's it shouldn't be. And it shouldn't be. So, do yeah, you think so Bo wins, gets rank one in EU because he clears camps better? No, he clears camps well. Don't get me wrong, but it's definitely a factor, a small, a small factor. factor. But it's not a. It's, entry. it's the barrier to entry. Yeah, that that they're removing. That's right. Bo was his because he's skirmishing was just yeah. out of this world. Yeah. And all the fundamentals, jungle tracking, know how to gank, know how to be efficient, knew what a good gank, what a bad gank was. That's right. Which is, yeah, that's learning. That's, that's playing jungle. League of Legends. That's, that's playing League of Legends. That's, that's yeah, spot on. Yeah. yeah, I agree. That's what the role is. That's what the role is. All right. Um, so this is my time to, so I should now go jungle secondary. There's yep. no excuse. Yep. Now you can and join us all to learn my jungle fundamentals, learn how to, what a good gank and a bad gank is. That's right. Do Assess and the maps, them again, know how to set up an objective. Yep. And get end of review to three minutes. Yeah. And you're good to go. Cause. And then I'm, I'm halfway there. Yeah. All right. Um, so I think that wraps up anything else to talk about for preseason. Oh yeah. Minutes? I wanted to talk about Syndra. Oh yeah. Syndra. So that's not in the preseason, but it's already out. Yep. So Syndra got massive changes. Uh, so do you know anything about Syndra? What do you know about Syndra? What I, the first, my interactions is this, people was pinging their, their spikes or what's it called? Splits? Oh yeah, splinters or something. Splinters. And I'm like, oh, is this champion like a, a scaling Spink mage Spinkters? now? Something like that. Like I got to wait for something to stack up. I don't, <laughs> yeah. Explain it to me, Curtis. I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> you didn't hear my joke before. Oh, uh, I didn't. No. All right, some people in this would have picked it up. Anyway. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Uh, you guys missed it as well. All right. All right. Um, yeah. So, you know, basically, you know, what they've done. So Syndra was like this really early lane bully, hardcore dominate your opponent champion, right? Yep. And what they did is that they've they've shifted her power more into like scaling. And so and they've done it in such a really cool, it's a really cool way. So so back before like, the Q was on a really low cooldown and like you could Q all the time. Now it's a seven second cooldown. Oh, and when you get, I believe, I think, I think it's like when you get level six or something, you can like, you have like two stacks of your Q. So it's like, it's like two charges 
and then but it's still so if you use both charges it's like honest it's flat seven seconds but then you get ability haste on your queue when you get level six so so they've made it such that it's less early game bullying and more and, and more scaling because then the stacks um the the splinter stacks um, you upgrade your ability, so you get the oh no, so it's just not you get the Q upgrade when you get a certain amount of stacks. Sorry, it's not the R when you level up, it's when you get the certain amount of stacks, and then you get the Q upgrade, then you get the W, and the W upgrade gives you true damage on the W. The E uh, upgrade makes the cone know. bigger, and the R upgrade, um, it, it's like an execute. The R, it's like an execute. So it's sort of like Victor. They've made it sort of like Victor upgrades. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's actually more like Victor. Well, but I would say upgrades. Victor's more like a lane bully. And then what they've also done with the Syndra is that um, you get stacks via um, hitting the enemy or whatever, but by getting cannons, etc. But it's like high skill cap. If you land more abilities on the enemy, you get your stacks faster. Ah, so but so isn't that really counterintuitive though? So you, 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 you scale, but you're, you're weaker early, but they're incentivizing you to hit them to get your stacks to scale faster. So it's really interesting. That's it's really interesting. So it's like it? they're kind of tr trying you to walk, they want you to really walk that tightrope, not play super defensive and sit on a tower on farm. They want you to still kind I, of trade. I think that's fantastic Yeah, I design. like that. I think that's really cool. I think that's a really good it's design. It's really smart. Uh, and it's like a really high skill cap champion. So I like the, the direction. And now it has a much clearer, well, not clearer identity. It's a, um, yeah, it's more mid, mid to late game scaling. And does um, the W... Does so much damage because now you max W second. And What's you, the W do again? So that's the one where like you like you pick up the orb and you throw oh, it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And and the true damage on that is insane. So you actually got to really look out for the W because the W does like uh. a lot of damage. Um, and they removed that. They removed a combo. You can't do the EQ combo anymore. Like you could like walk up before it and like E and then push them back then Q and get this done. They've removed that. You can't do that anymore. So some people were a little bit sad about that. But overall, um. Looks like a really cool champion, very high skill cap. Um, and yeah, I, I just think it's really great changes. That's fantastic. That's great design. How does that compare to the Talia rework? Talia is interesting. There's mixed things about Talia because Talia now is a is scaling pick as well. That's so, right. I so, feel like they sort of did the... That's, yeah. that's what I feel like. It looks like Riot's trying to do that more with mages. They're just, mm, just trying make to make it, more it all one clear sort of identity in a way. Yeah. Like if you think about it now, um, yeah, Victor and Syndra are very similar and Talia is just more... Because Talia used to be early game, That's right. right. Yeah. It used to be like level six as well, like you're max strong mm. and then you just kind of do your full combo early game. Now it's a lot of the time you're going first strike, you're just going to scale until you get like two items and then you kind of kill everyone in mid game. Um, some people really liked that. Some people didn't. I know Tim, one of the other admin, uh, Mysterious, one of the admins in the MLA, coaches, sorry, he... Um, he tried it for a long time and then it just didn't click. He just didn't, didn't have that early game proactivity that he was used to. Um, I think they, I think it's all right. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I personally like the old Talia, but this one does make more sense in terms of the direction of where they're going. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know because I think it depends what you like. If you like scaling, it's good, better for you. If you don't like scaling, then it's not for you. So yeah, I'm conflicted on that one. Um, other than that, that's basically it. All right. I think we'll wrap up the episode here for okay. we'll moving to mailbag. Um, preseason changes. We will again, you know, right. Have said that this is experimental. Yep. A lot of the things will be interesting, especially the top lane thing. That's, hmm. woo, that's a interesting. interesting one. So we'll uh, get back and, dude, I'm so excited to play preseason with this new channel. But, dude, I, I'm really excited. And we'll do another episode as well on how to utilize pre preseason. Oh, dude, you Very important. That's so important. Super important. Yeah. So we've got, I mean, what's the date now? We've got uh, from the time this episode's released about three weeks until that patch is going to go live. So three weeks at the end of the season. Well, by the time this episode comes out on Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into mailbag, guys. Away mm. we go. Mm. Oh. song all right first question here is from shogun title of this email is lost soraka one trick hi nathan and curtis you guys have been a great resource for repairing my relationship with the game i feel like i have learned how to have fun and enjoy the details of the game rather than the number associated with my rank so from the bottom of my heart thank you a little bit about my journey. I started in season three playing Kale support. 
rip post rework kale support, I quickly climbed the ladder to gold. Once there, I switched to playing a variety of champions, but eventually settled on Soraka from season four on. This is a very old school player. I have thousands of games on Soraka, and while I have dabbled half a season on mid or jungle over the years, I always come back to the Soraka support pick. She fits with my playstyle of love into attrition slash force to, to be to table flip in my opponents. Um, in season six, I peaked at diamond three, but I found I hit a wall in my climb and hovered high platinum ever since. This season, I mentally imploded and played troll supports all the way to gold three from platinum one. I finally discovered your podcast after that implosion and have been working towards repairing my mental state when playing the game, but it's going to be a long journey for me. That being said, when I lose, I can't help but think if I've hit a wall with Soraka's support. She's a simple champion who plays the game in a very distinct way, which makes learning the game sort of hard for me. I feel as though it has hindered my growth through the years, but I haven't been able to play something that I enjoy as much as her. If I truly want to climb and improve... Can I keep playing Soraka support or do I need to spend a season mid uh, learning more fundamentals of the game? Is the war just an excuse not to look at the details and do the work I need to do to climb? So I guess this is potentially moving to the territory my first is sort of like this is maybe highlighting maybe the dangers of being a one trick of a very simple identity champion. Because you made a video recently on the champion yeah. stuff. Look. You know, I, I think when it comes to being a one trick, you, you got to understand what your journey is going to look like. There are going to be very hard Soraka games, but you got to not be bothered about them. Like to be a one trick, you got to love your champ so much that when you go into each and every one of those games, when you see the draft and you like see a blitz crank and then you see all these champs, whatever. Those engaged champs. Engaged champs. You're going to be like, okay, bring it on. I, I, I'm going to adapt. I got to be, you know, do this with the wave, whatever it might be. You got to problem solve and do what you can. Is it objectively easier to have multiple champions in pool and play, you know, complement that Soraka with maybe, it doesn't necessarily have to be another engage, it doesn't have to be an engagement board, maybe multiple different chances that fit in different situations or whatever. But, you know, is it objectively easier to climb that way? Yes. Does that mean that's what you should do? Well, that's ultimately on you. We don't know how much you love Soraka, right? If you want to be a one trick, you can be a one trick. And I'm sure there's a way to make it work, right? I'm sure there's a, there's like, I'm sure there are other Soraka one tricks that are in Master and Grandmaster and other regions. I, I could basically guarantee that. And if you wanted to confirm that, go to OPGD and, and search, look at the data. I'm sure you could find people that have done that. Um, you know, one thing I do want to talk about here, and this may be a tangent, maybe not, I don't know. Um, I've got a client in a very similar situation. He's in Diamond and uh, he was actually a Diana one trick. His name's a Anti. And... Look, I, he said to me, said, Curtis, I just really want to climb through Master Plus and like, you know, get high elix. He ended up getting Master, then drop back down into Diamond. And I've really struggled with him because it feels like we go in this toxic loop where it goes, okay, he gets plateaued. Okay, he plateaus at some point. We all do. We all plateau. Then at this plateau point, he starts to then get angry that he's plateauing and, and quote unquote, can't figure out his problems. I'm like, okay, well, what's the counter to that, Nathan? If you're plateauing and can't get... You, you've got, you're facing problems. or don't know what your problems are. What do you do? You get into the details, get into the details. We get specific and we figure out what's going wrong. And then we try to address those problems and then we learn and then we push the plateau point up more. And then we rinse repeat going over and over again. What was happening with him is that he gets to his plateau point. He fundamentally, he got, he gets, he, it's like, he, he like dislikes plateaus to the point where he like, mentally then just gives up or like he, he like just keeps brute forcing doing the same thing, hoping that he's going to get different results. Yeah. And then he doesn't get the results. And then like, he doesn't get, he, he, he um, more and more just fails to get into the details, gets stuck in a rut and, and then, then just then goes down and gets worse. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, look, man, okay, this is only going to go one or two ways. You're either going to keep coming to me with questions and VODs being like, Curtis, this is a problem. What do I do here? What do I do here? Let's go to the, do again and again and again. And we, we overcome the problems. Or you're going to have a hissy fit. You're going to get angry that you're not, you're not improving. It's in like the, he's expecting to randomly just play better yeah. one day. I, you know, this is the thing. It's like, well, I always say like, People think they know what the process is, but they feel like they don't really get it. I feel like they don't get it. Like, we don't just randomly say, do a process 
and that's, you know, and, and you just insert this buzzword process and you're going to get better. The point of a process is that it, it helps you overcome problems and just get better at the game by getting into the details and just rinse repeating and slowly chipping away. And like they, th- it's like they're doing a process without believing why they're doing the process. It's like, okay, I'm playing in three blocks and I'm playing a small champ pool and I should climb. But they're not getting into the details. They're not being super curious about what the problem is and trying to problem trying solve. Trying to find answers. Trying to find answers. What's the difference between this this challenger player yeah. and me? It's like, what, what am I working towards? Again, they just feel like they're they're doing the same thing, expecting the same results. Yeah, and it's, it's like- Different it's like, results. I, I feel like you just don't get it, man. Like I, I try, I've, tr- I've tried to say it a trillion ways. And every time I feel like he, I'm pissing him off by saying get into the details. Like I feel like, like a meme at this point. I feel like I've said it so many times. Like I feel like he doesn't get it. No. And I've tried to explain, but he doesn't get it. Then when I said, I said, okay, maybe especially master grandma's like, yeah, dude, you're in the top of the player base. Like you got really hard. Out. It's incredibly hard to go from you great to re- exceptional. You don't just deserve grandmaster or challenger. Yeah. Like you know, like the, the games are like master tier players. And Grandmaster players are completely different players. And the, we've talked about before, the gap between Master and Challenger in terms of skill level is ginormous. It's like going from great to outstanding hmm. is massive. And the consistency. And going from outstanding to amazing is 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 even harder. Hmm. Like going from those brackets, because everyone's great at Master. But going from great to outstanding and outstanding to amazing is bloody difficult. Very, very difficult. And so what I thought with him is I thought he went down that rabbit hole with being in a rut with the champion, he didn't like his champ anymore. Because remember, what I thought is, if he's not having fun, he's not he's not curious. So then, when I said, "Okay, we're going to pick up another champion and we'll go through that process with another champ," but then he's having the same problem with another champion. So that led me to believe that it's actually not the champ; it's actually his mindset towards learning. And he he and what I said to him is like, "Well, obviously, you've never plateaued at something before and overcome adversity to figure out the problem, right? So you can either then uh, give up." find something you're more talented at, get to a high level and then face the same problem inevitably. Or we can sit here and probably try and problem solve it. But I can't make him do it. Like, yeah. you know, and I feel like with here, with this guy, talking back to this guy, it's like, well, you're going to have the same problem. You're going to get to a point where you're going to plateau. He's going to, you're going to plateau, man, a Soraka. You might get to D3 or whatever the hell it might be. You're going to plateau. Shit's going to get hard. You can either then blame your champion and complain or you can get into the details. Or if you're blaming a champion, you feel like you just don't want to play those really hard Soraka games, that's okay as well. You can have multiple champs in your pool. These are all things you need to think about. But inevitably, man, no matter where it is, you're going to plateau. Mm. It's about getting into those details. I mean, you know, uh, Shogun, can you honestly look at your games, review them, and tell me that you're playing perfectly every game? That you're playing. There's no way he could possibly because I'm I'm in challenger and I don't. I have so much I can, I'm disgraceful. I can see <laughs> that I need to work on. Yeah. And I know the gap between me and even pro players, even even me and like the you know, our rank five jungle, rank four jungle, dude, the gaps are huge. And I'm like, you know, rank twenty, rank rank thirty. Like I have so much to work on still. I look right? at me and one of my clients chirp and I'm like, this guy's skirmishing is just so much better than mine. It's not even close. You know, so, yeah. you know, I think that uh, what, when they get these questions as well, it's like people plateau, they get, they feel like they're capped with a champion. Subconsciously, they might have the disrespect, disrespect of the game, you know, or like gaming in general. It's like, you know, you're talented or not. Like, you know, they follow BBC and stuff, but again, subconsciously, this can be very it. ingrained. It's, it's, the, it's yeah. the gaming and just the like, it's easy. And like, you know, like this guy must just be more talented than me or this guy can just figure this out yeah. and I can't, you know, like that subconscious is definitely very ingrained, especially friendship groups. I don't know what his friendship group is yeah. like, but but uh, yeah, dude, like, you know. Or he could just have a fixed mindset. Yep, that too as well. We don't know. You know, and, and that might sound scary. It's played perfect every game, but like that's that's how you know. Like if like the way that I view it is, if, if I play perfect every game, you know, you're in the you know you're in the top ten rank one sort of level on your server, right? That's why and I always bring so it back to just curiosity and fun. Hmm. As long as you're having fun with your champ, you love your champion, and you're curious and you're actively trying to problem solve, you will get there. And he maybe he should sign up to Cupcake's coaching as well. Get some coaching from Cupcake. That's gonna help. I want to reframe this. Right, not so much playing perfect, just not making basic mistakes more so. Because basically, I make basic mistakes in my games. Like, just get rid of all those and you'll be surprised the where you can potentially go with your any champion. Agreed. All right, happy with that answer, Curtis? Yep. All right, moving on here is from James. Challenging the fun narrative. 
Okay, here we go. So this was from our last episode. Love it. We like to get our thoughts challenged, Curtis, yeah? Sure do. Get some good conversation going. I am not... Oh, so g'day, Charlie, Nathan, and Curtis. He literally puts Charlie's Charles. name for four hours. We need to get him a mic, man. I'm not good at maths and science because to me, during my schooling, these subjects just weren't fun. I couldn't really see or imagine what these subjects would or could lead to. I'm happy with my career and have no regrets, but I can't help but wonder what if my teachers were able to provide me with an inspiring vision of just how profound, important and fun science and math can be if one is willing to grind these subjects out, push past the pain barrier and boring fundamentals and achieve mastery in them. For example, making rockets, programming AI, AI, making life-saving drugs and treatments would be so cool. But first, we've got to suffer through learning the periodic table. I've recently had an interesting experience in league. I had a 38% win rate with Rek'Sai for my first 100 games, going from consistently plat 150 LP to one game away from demotion to gold, something I haven't been for years. I uninstalled the game three times and had the least fun I've ever had in nine years of playing. It just wouldn't click. This, char- this character just requires a completely different way of viewing the game and is completely unforgiving. I'd never played an assassin before, really. I think the only reason I continued was because I knew I was learning a lot and could see the potential this champ had for solo carrying and controlling the game. But I certainly didn't see a world where I would ever find the champ or Rek'Sai anything less than frustrating, let alone fun. I was recently able to join Soul 2, and after just one review with the great man, Nathan Mott... Yes, he did write this. This is not me improvising. Can I check that? You can check that, Curtis. Where's that great and Nathan in the same sentence? Here we go. Where is that? Oh, the great. Oh, okay. Let's just need to confirm that one. Checks out. I had a major breakthrough on this champ. So after he did my review with me. Through just two small learning objectives, I was able to break through the barrier and won the last 16 out of 20 games. You wonder why I chose this email, guys. Nathan's ego is going to get out of control. And and immediately back in Platinum 3. I have a long way to go, but but I'm having a small taste of what Champion Mastery can feel like. And now having the most fun ever after uninstalling uninstalling the game three times. On a champion, I only started playing because of how little I understood it and how far away it was from my personality, perspective, and previous experience in the game. Going back to his analogy on maths and science. I've struggled with a fixed mindset in the past, but this experience has taught me that if we are only willing to believe, to suffer long enough, not quit, and seek out the right guidance, we can have success and fun on any champion, regardless of whether we have immediate mojo with it or not, if we're willing to suffer the embarrassment and pain of pursuing champ champ mastery. It's like that picture of the miner who is one swing off these pickaxe away from striking gold, but he gives up just millimeters from a huge payday. I looked at your RE games on OPGG, Curtis, and I have no idea of the details, but it looks like you were completely dominating some of the final games before you threw in the towel. You're one of the greatest League of Legends mids and minds in the world and reckon you're on the brink of becoming a complete RE menace. And I'd love to see it. Do you think it's possible your one learning objective way from extreme success and funnel on that champ despite it being so far from your usual champ pool? Anyway, my point is this Rek'Sai experience has shown me that for my, for me personally, the most funny League of Legends one can have is just beyond the horizon, beyond the pain barrier of developing champ mastery. It's those little moments of success where we get it right on a champ we never thought we could or would where you do one high impact gank bot dive after recognizing a slow stacking wave and a jinx karma lane with mid priority. I really could have quit league forever because of how little enjoyment I got from the process of learning Rek'Sai. But now I'm having the most rewarding and fun experience of my league journey ever. Although your Oriana client quit, I do have to wonder if they had just stuck it out a bit longer. So this is the Connor Connor from last Mm -hmm. episode you talked about. Uh, what kind of enjoyment they could have had on that champ. A great Orina game is really a piece of art. When you lose to a good one and they completely dominate you, you're never act exactly sure why. I can't even begin to imagine how amazing and powerful that must feel and how rewarding it would be to conquer such a complex champ. So beyond champ mastery equals fun, satisfaction, and reward, perhaps especially on champs you don't first click with. What are your thoughts, Jim? Very good post. It's an interesting one. Very interesting. 
I want to I want to really dig deep on the mining analogy. <laughs> dig deep on the mining analogy there. Yeah. Um, I like that analogy where it's like you know you, you don't know if you're one strike away, or one lone objective away from making this game right. fun. But you also don't know if you've gone down a complete wrong. You could be there forever. Yeah, right? and that's the point. So that's where it's tricky, right? How it's do I? Murky. How do we know? It's very. And so you know, I think you know, fun is the fun element of league. It's so subjective, right? I think back. Uh, you know, you know, you're especially when you're young, right? And like, let's say the maths and science example. Mm. Like, you know, you have like stories where like. You just have like this art teacher or maybe this math teacher that just made it really exciting because you're so young, you just latched onto it and had fun. Like, you know, and yeah, some people might miss out on that opportunity, but that's like the reality. Like they mm. might have fun in another aspect or, you know, like, like right. inf- you know what I mean? So yeah, it's, it's really tricky, right? It's like, you could definitely see that, but maybe you just don't have that experience. Like for example, I might've missed some opportunities to play other roles. Maybe I would be having way more fun as a top laner, right? But I didn't go down that road and like, I'm sort of like have created fun out of the sort of path I went down. I think what, what Jim is likely potentially, I, I don't know, I'm just going to throw it out there, potentially conflating is, you know, fun via champ mastery and fun via you naturally resonating with a champion. You know, I think like, okay, how do I frame this? Um I think, I think, I think here, you know, Jim has gotten a lot of satisfaction out of sticking to something and then getting results. Going through like really bad, like he wanted, he quit the game, he uninstalled the game and now he's getting results. Like I would say he's actually having, again, this is hard for us. I know he's not here with us, but I would argue that he's having more fun from the actual feeling of just finally playing League of Legends with this champion, less so Rek'Sai specifically. It's like, imagine that you've been trying to learn this one thing for so long. It's like the sunk cost fallacy. You've put so much time and effort and the he, and every time you lose and every, you know, every game, it's like, oh, this is getting worse. I'm getting deeper. I'm getting deeper. And then finally you have results. It's like, it's, 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 I would argue that it's maybe even less so fun and more so relief. Like relief from the pressure and the weight that was on your shoulders. Like how much time he's like, it's like, okay, all that time I spent in the game. That's right. Yeah. That's a very good point. And so like, you know, might be conflating relief and fun. Yeah. So again, this is all very subjective, but what I would say is that we don't all have enough time to do that. Like at at the end of the day, most people who play in our clients only have time for like 20 games a week. Hmm. And so you can, a month of games is what, like 80 games, right? You could theoretically spend a month, a month and a bit trying to learn that champion that's a month and a bit gone or you could be like okay i already just know i click with the champion. i already know just i like that champion and you go down that rabbit hole and you make that work so i feel like for the in terms of practicality and what's the most pragmatic you should really try to in the first you know 20 30 games have a pretty good idea if you want to go down that rabbit hole or not rather than have to get to the 80 100 game mark and then no um, but I do think there are certain champions with a very high skill cap that you have to do, you actually just do have to get 80 games in to really know if you like the champion or not. And look, I'll be honest, I don't even have the answer. You know, I'm just spitballing here. I'm trying to figure this out myself. I don't know. I don't even know how to gauge fun. I don't know. I don't know how to balance fun with champ mastery. I don't know if, um, if this, or, I- again, if Jim, you're even having fun because you're finally playing jungle versus with Rek'Sai versus, and like the relief thing versus you just now relieved that, you can learn like maybe it's proof to himself that he can learn something like i don't know it's so complicated so i think it's more food for thought that's what i'm taking away from this i need Mm. to think about that more and 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 maybe it's not as simple as okay i like this champ therefore i should play it and that's what gives me fun maybe it's actually okay we're all going to be pretty miserable in every champ we play and maybe this outlier is that kind of know. Maybe the outlier is that they know what they like and the majority of people don't know what they like mm. and they are just going to have to put in 100 games on a champ and fail and then finally make that breakthrough. Maybe that is the norm. Mm. I And in a way, I feel like me and you, Nathan, we're, we're so detached from what the average player experience would be like. Mm. Like even when we learn a champion, we have so much experience mm. with them in our games mm. that we're not truly learning that champion from scratch. Like, sped, the process is super sped up. The, we the understand process the game is so different. And, you know, we can, we we can, can get detach. away with things. Well, you can separate a mistake via a jungle fundamental versus That's a mistake right. with yes, the champ. Of our experience. Whereas other people can't do that. Yeah. Like he was probably making mistakes with a lesser Rek'Sai and more so just jungle fundamentals, I'm yeah. assuming, mm. you know. 
know? So with us, I feel like we can't really answer this question that well because we're so detached from the average player uh, base in in terms of their journey. So this is all good food for thought, things that I'm going to really think about over the next few years. And and I I think it's a really great note though and something that I'll I'll think about some more, Jim. So I appreciate you writing in. Fantastic question. That's why we love our BBC's questions. And I I love these because as well, I love getting perspectives on our theories yeah because these are only theories but these are not things that are set chiseled in stone we're trying to just figure this out the game's very new man we're in the early stages very early stages yeah all right that's it for our podcast today good work everyone let's keep on improving we got three weeks Anthony, you're stressing everyone out until the end of the season. You got to get that end of season right get those ranks rewards he's just ruining ruining everyone's journey yes three weeks charles you got to panic as well Charles is panicking there three weeks. (laughs) Good work, guys. Let's get that end of season rank goal and we'll see you next time.